Number five, that, that, that climate change is lethal. Oh, good guy. You can find hypocrisy with it, but I don't think they believe this. No. And I, I don't want to be in the business of questioning motives, but I do want to be in the business of observing actions, of observing behavior. So how many leftists would have multiple homes, multiple carbon emitting cars, private jets, uh, one of the big, the guy who narrated the polar bear film, and also wasn't Wolf of Wall Street, Leonardo DiCaprio. A world that we collectively felt in 2015 as the hottest year in recorded history. Our production needed to move to the southern tip of this planet just to be able to find snow. Climate change is real. It is happening right now. It is the most urgent threat facing our entire species. And, and we need to work collectively together. All right. Uh, oh, right after that, he bought his seventh house. <laughs> yes. <exactly. laughs> and here's something else that's really interesting. I didn't know Reg told me this, our research at the Beast. This new study shows that actually those highly concerned about climate change, they actually typically make less environmentally friendly decisions than climate change skeptics. What, what are they, uh, like farming out the responsibility to the governments to take care of it? That's it's not good, their own because personal? Because they see the government as the charity. If I've yeah. given, you know, either, oh, there are no prisons, oh, there are no poor houses. They're the pre-redemption Ebenezer Scrooge. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prisons, poor houses. Consistently. Yeah, they should take care of it. And then post-redemption Ebenezer Scrooge is all about his personal charitable givings because he knows that the government can't take care of it. Right. They constantly, the left constantly fights things that would help their cause. So uh, bir bird scooters. Uh, in Austin was a great example. We were there recently. They're awesome. Yeah. It's, same thing with uh, Uber, the sharing economy, solar panels in the desert. Ted Kennedy didn't want wind turbines because he didn't want to, to, to harm his view. <laughs> the, the, the bird scooters, remember, we were riding these all around Austin. They're fantastic. They solve urban transportation problems. The problem is solved. The urban transportation <laughs> problem in where weather allows is Largely solved. Leonardo DiCaprio. Look at look at the private jets of these celebrities. You see these yeah. all. The, you know what? Here's a good example, right? There are practical decisions you can make that the left couldn't make. They could shave off just a little bit, right? Well, instead of a private, instead of a Learjet, use a PC-12. Uses 27 percent of the fuel of a Learjet. I know someone who's very wealthy in Texas, huge conservative, could afford anything he wants. And guess what he uses? He uses that because it uses less fuel because yeah. he realizes that he doesn't want to waste money, uh -huh. and he shares it with other people. Free market at work. You know what, Leo? Le 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 you get to your premiere 45 minutes later if you buy the single turbo prop. What, what <laughs> you, I think I need nine Lear jets, but but you can you need to you need to use one roll of toilet paper. <laughs> it goes beyond hypocrisy, right? Every everyone's a hypocrite. I understand this. You're myself included. It's a question of genuine baseline sincerity, and I I can't say that the motives are impure. But here, if you actually believe that my crossover is going to lead to this. <laughs> just take the propeller plane, get there a few minutes later. That's all I'm saying. Baby steps. Baby step into the prop C. I love T2. But ba maybe baby steps into the Learjet. No, no, baby steps into the prop. Ba baby steps to the G6. <laughs> baby steps to the PC. Maybe baby steps to the G7. How about baby steps to flying coach, <laughs> hole?